Have you ever been listening to a sermon or an audiobook in the car and the speaker started to talk really quietly? So you leaned in close, maybe turned the volume up, and suddenly were blown away by the speaker as he shouted the next passage. And Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. Audio segments that are too quiet or too loud are really obnoxious to listen to. You don't know what to expect, it can be distracting and confusing, and it almost always detracts from your content. So today we're going to talk about two ways to address audio that's too loud or too quiet, compression and normalization. Typically when we're working with audio, when the input is really quiet, then the output is also really quiet. And when the input is really loud, then the output is really loud. Now. The difference between these loudest sounds in the file and these quietest sounds in the file, that's the dynamic range of the file. The way that audio compression works is by taking those loudest sounds and bringing them down a bit, thus compressing the dynamic range of the audio file. By bringing these loudest parts down, you make the difference between the loudest parts and the quietest parts smaller, so they're not so dramatic and no one's sitting there twiddling with their audio volume, getting blown away when they do because the loud part is yet to come. If you're using if you're using common editing software like um, Adobe Audition or Audacity, there are five settings that you're going to need to see and need to adjust when working with compression. The first of these is threshold. Threshold is how loud the input has to be before the compressor kicks in at all. So if you set the threshold very low at say negative 35 dB, you'll be compressing almost all of the audio, the quietest parts and the loudest parts. And if you set it really high, say negative 6 dB, then you're only going to be compressing that little strip of loud sounds right at the top. You're going to need to listen to your own source material to know exactly how to get the best sound. But for spoken audio, we generally recommend about negative 24 dB as a threshold for compression. The next is the noise floor. So the noise floor tells the compressor everything below this level is noise, it's background. Don't do anything to it. Don't amplify it accidentally, don't compress it, don't apply any effects to it whatsoever. You'll know that you don't have this value quite right and probably too low if you listen to your audio file and during pauses of speaking you start to hear a hiss come up behind the speaker. Try bringing that noise floor up uh, and see if that gets rid of that problem. Uh, the third, and this is the most important uh, value in compressing, is the compression ratio. Now the compression ratio is usually defined um, in the terms of like 3 to 1, 5 to 1, 10 to 1. Uh, what that means is that a 3 to 1 ratio means for every three steps up that the audio input uh, goes up in loudness, then only bring the audio output up by one. So a 5 to 1 ratio would mean the input would need to go up 5 steps before the output would go up once. So you can see as you make this ratio higher, 10 to 1, that it's going to have to be super loud before you're going to get the output to become very loud. Um, so for spoken audio, we tend to recommend about a 3 to 1 ratio. Now you can play with this if you feel like a different value gives you a better result. That's usually a good place to begin and it helps bring everything together without losing all of the dynamic range in the file. Now our fourth parameter is called attack time. And attack time tells the compressor how long a loud sound needs to be loud before it should kick in and start bringing it down. If you make this value too small, you might think, well, let's make it zero. You get a very strange staccato-like sound when you start running into the compressor as it smashes these files, uh, or smashes these audio clips. So play with this value a little bit, but we recommend you start about three tenths of a second. That usually seems to be uh, sufficient to prevent sounds from getting too loud without being really obvious that you're compressing the audio. And the last parameter, the fifth one, is the opposite of attack time, and it's called decay time. And it is how long should the compressor wait after a sound is no longer too loud to kick out. Now, if you set this value too long, you might miss some quiet parts after loud parts. And if you set it too short, again, you're going to sound very staccato, very pound, pound, pound. Um, so play with that value a little bit, but we recommend you start around eight tenths of a second and go from there. Now, there are a few other things that you might run into as you're working with audio compression. Uh, one is often called something like makeup gain after compressing or normalize after compressing. And this gets us to our next topic, which is normalization. So after you have compressed those loud parts and you've brought them down, now there's kind of this gap at the top of the file between what the loudest sound could be and what the loudest sound is. So what normalization does is it takes what the loudest sound is and bumps it up to what the loudest sound could be. You know that someone hasn't done this in a file if you've got the volume turned all the way up and you still can't seem to hear it. Normalization means you're not going to have that problem when you play it back. 
Uh, we highly recommend that you normalize after compressing. You could do this in all in one step if your audio uh, software supports it, or do it separately later. And if you do it separately later, you might be given options like, do I want to normalize to 0 dB, or negative 1 dB, or negative 3 dB? It doesn't particularly matter what you choose. A lot of people would recommend that you leave at least a few dB of headroom in there between 1 and 3. That's why you see those settings commonly available. Uh, regardless, be consistent from recording to recording to recording so that your listeners aren't affected by some strange change as this file was really loud and this file was quiet because they were normalized differently. One of the really great things, one of the great things about Sermons I.O. is that we do all of this for you. You take your audio file of your sermon, upload it to us, we'll compress it, we'll normalize it, convert it to mp3, distribute it to all your listeners, you don't have to worry about anything. But if you want to do this on your own, go ahead, take advantage of these things. If you have any other tips for compression or normalization, please share them in the comments below. And as always, please subscribe to our channel so that you'll get any more updates that we release in the next few weeks here. Um, and if you have any questions or want more information, check out the description for some links to some more uh, technical details about compression and normalization. Thanks again for watching and for Sermons.io, I'm Jeff McFadden.